Hello everyone, welcome to video 27 of chapter 3. In this video, we'll go through two examples um, of uh, um, dealing with uh, redundancy. Okay. So, here's the first example. We want to minimize this expression here with the two constraints and the four variables. Okay, So we can take a look at this problem. And we see that this right hand side is positive, so um, this problem is in standard form, and we can um, use LP assistant. And we see this is not canonical form, but we can use LP assistant directly there and adding artificial variables. Okay, so um, let's put this into the LP assistant. Okay, so, and this is the tableau generated by the LP assistant. And I have made a separate video and using LP assistant, you see how I set it up, how I put in the data, how I um, set up the artificial variables. Hope that one will be helpful for you of using it. Okay, now let's take a look at the tableau and then let's talk about details here. Okay, so the first part here is the initial problem, and then we added two artificial variables, x5, x6, and then it generated this, this um, auxiliary um, problem to minimize w. And then let's look at coefficients, two negative ones. Let's say this is more negative. I choose to pivot here, and then I look at these two, Look at the ratio, they are the same, they're both 2. 6 over 3 is 2, 4 over 2 is 2, so you can choose any of them. So let's pick this one. I click on that and I pivot and uh, I obtain the second part of the tableau. And now we see that in this tableau, W is 0, which means the minimum is obtained, but x6 which is an artificial variable is still in the set of the um, basic variable so I have not put the original problem in canonical form because this one is an artificial variable we need to move this out actually in this problem you can also observe that um, the coefficient in the objective function for the w here actually still has a negative term, okay, even though it's already at its minimum. So, which means I need to, I could pivot here, and 7 over 3 is also non zero. And note also that the right hand side here is zero. So, if I pivot any anyone in this equation, I will not change the objective function here, okay. So let's click on 7 over 3, and then I get the next part of the tab. And here we see that um, it's all 0 for the w and 0. So this last equation basically says 0 equals 0. Okay, And then we can throw that away, and we're done. Now we enter stage 2. Now we look at optimization for z. That is, we'll look at the coefficient here. And we will totally neglect this part. This is the artificial variable part. Okay, so um, we see there's a negative term, and then we see there is a positive coefficient. That's where we um, pivot, and you click on that, and it generates this tableau. So we'll totally neglect the last one. We'll only look here, and the coefficients are positive. Nothing is negative. So we can conclude that the minimum of z is found and it's negative 6 here and it's obtained at x4 is 6 x2 is 0 and the other x1 and x3 are also 0 so it's at 0 0 0 6 okay so this is uh, the first example of uh, dealing with the redundancy okay um, let's take a look at our second example, I call it LP7. This is the example from the textbook, 3.7.2. Okay, so take a look at this problem. 
I have um, four variables and I have three constraints. It's given in the standard form. So you know that we can put the standard form directly into the LP assistant and uh, adding artificial variables to make it in canonical form. Okay, so then we'll now proceed with the LP assistant in the next page. Okay, so here is the output of the Tableau of the LP assistant. If you want to see details of setting it up and how it works in action, you can watch the video on that, the next video. Okay, so let's take a look at the Tableau. So the first part is the setting. And then this is the standard form, and these are the artificial variables we add up. And then let's let's minimize W first. And we see we have three negative terms. This is more negative, so let's pivot here. And then we look at the ratio. And they're all 10. They're the same. So let's just pick one. Let's say I pick this one. Okay, after you click on that and then you obtain the next part, the second portion of the tableau. And then we see that um, here I still have a negative term, even though now Z is, uh, W is already zero, and, uh, but I still have a negative term, and I still have uh, both X5 and X7, they are artificial variables. I should remove them from the basic variables. Okay, so let's look at this negative four term here. I can choose either one or three. It's the same. So let's pick one. Let's click on x5. So once I've done that, so x4 is now basic variable. And then the only one in the, is uh, x7. But do we need to do anything about the x7? Let's look at the third part of the tableau more closely. Okay, so... Here the equation for W is already 0 equals 0. This one is redundant. It's not saying anything. But let's look at this third constraint here, x7. It's all 0, all the coefficients. And the right-hand side is 0. So this equation here basically is saying 0 equals 0. So that is a redundant one. Okay? So therefore, there is no need to pivot here and to remove x7 from the basic variable. We will simply neglect this row. So let's pretend this row doesn't exist and just look at the first two. And now we enter stage two. Now we minimize the z and we see that there's a negative coefficient. And then we look at these two. So there is one positive one. So we will pivot here. And you click on that in your LP assistant, and then you obtain the next part of the tableau, the final part actually, because if we look at the coefficient here for the z, and they are both non-negative. Okay, so now you can conclude that the minimum of z is obtained, it's negative 35, and it's obtained at um, x1 is 5, x4 is 15, and x2, x3 are both 0, so, and 5, 0, 0, 15, okay? So, I want to highlight that this is a problem, actually, we observed a redundant equation. Okay, so I hope that was fun and that was useful. I'll see you next time.